Submitted for your approval. Jeff's Jeff's everywhere, and not a Jeff to drink. We've got really cool looking guns, creepy bullets, persistent wholesale gun distributors, and could it be a happy ending in the Twilight Zone? Find out about all that and more because the Twilight Zone After Show starts now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. This is kind of like the opposite of the Twilight Zone theme, this music here. It's very upbeat, not at all mysterious. You don't have to worry about opening a door when that music's playing. There isn't going to be Jordan Peele behind that door telling you something creepy. Anyway, welcome to The After Show. I'm Jeff Blatt, as always, joined by Jeff Trey. And, of course, Jeff French there on the end. Yeah. We're here to talk about The Jeff Zone. Uh, tonight, The Blue Scorpion. And uh, I like to always start with just overall thoughts and reactions to the episode. Raven? Ooh, I mean, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff French here. I I like the show. I felt it was a little more quintessential Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I was able to get into the actual show without, you know, the, I guess, challenge we've had with some of the episodes. Mm -hmm. I, I did not like the ending, though. We'll get to that. We, we can get to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's there's di there's different parts to the ending. Can, oh. can we find an ending that we all just like? That we agree on? We all can agree on yeah. and I mean, enjoy. Who, who knew that the they were going to peak ending-wise with the comedian? Like, that that was kind of, I mean, for me, the best ending. That's true. Uh, I think the, the space one, and I'm not smart enough to remember what that one's called. That one had Six a... Six degrees that, of contact. Uh, uh, Something like Something that. Something like that. Yeah. Not Kevin Bacon, but Six Degrees of whatever it was. Uh, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, that one was a decent ending, but uh, a lot of times, yeah, the ending. I, I, I was fine with the ending of this one. Spoiler ah, alert. Yes, you uh, have to tell And Angelica, your overall thoughts on this week's Blue Scorpion episode of well, Twilight Zone. Well, first of all, you got my name wrong. My name is Jeff. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> um, I thought this was a... a Pretty fun in episode. Just going off of what Raven said, it was branching a little bit more away from that social commentary mm -hmm. and more towards, you know, psychological, maybe human mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. we might do sometimes. And playing off of that, it also had that weird twist in the middle where you thought it was going in one direction and it just does a flip flop. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was interesting and it was doing, it was keeping me on my toes basically. Yeah, I think that uh, you, you're absolutely right. I, I felt like it was going somewhere that it, it definitely didn't. And uh, sure, uh, guns in general is a very hot button political issue, but I don't think it really took that tact a little bit at the end. But during the actual story, they really, you know, there were no lectures, you mm -hmm. know, there were, uh, you know, just more feelings about like, oh, man, it would suck to get divorced and have no money and then your dad kills himself and uh, I thought Chris O'Dowd did a great job I mean because usually you see him he's more comedic than anything else I mean for people who can't quite put their finger on I mean one of the places that uh, I think I first saw him was in uh, Bridesmaids where he's just the police officer and uh, he had a show on HBO and you know he's he's been around for a while but I thought he did a really good job conveying, you know, sort of the, the really heavy emotions that uh, he's dealing with to basically before we even see him, he's already uh, stressed out having a conversation with his soon to be ex-wife. But uh, I thought uh, I thought he did a, a really good job throughout the episode. And, you know, I mean, I think you'd need to because he really carries the episode. Uh, yeah. What did you think, Angelica? Uh, he, yeah, I agree. He did a great job. He I mean, I think just sort of. Uh, going against maybe something a little bit that you said I think it is part of his kind of brand to be a little bit more earnest and very very Irish so I, I he's think he's on Irish. brand with I, it. I must not have seen enough that he's done because usually anything that I've seen has definitely at least had a somewhat comedic uh, okay. element not straight but out he's comedy. always been the earnest one you know right. he's a little more serious like in Bridesmaid right yeah well Bridesmaids. he is very serious yeah mm -hmm. that's true he's like the cop Right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely the cop, and, uh, you know, I think uh, I, 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 I could look up some more of what he's done. But what did you think? Uh, I, overall, the whole series has done a great job with casting 
Yeah. And the actors. Even seeing the next episode, I'm very excited about seeing the talent in that show. But all of the shows, the talent has been spot on. I really like um, all of the acting. Actually, I can't even think. Even when we talked about, what is it, Dr. Baby? <laughs> even that episode, even the child actor in that. Phenomenal. No, there were, yeah, there was good acting in, mm-hmm. in that episode, for sure. So, yeah. yeah. I think overall, I, I really enjoyed the acting. And I know you meant to say Baby Doctor, but that's okay. I just wanted <laughs> to make sure. It's Dr. Baby. Are you sure we're not on opposite sides of the infor- uh, this d- argument d- now? Maybe uh, we've I traded. I feel like it just rings better. Wait, wait. Are we Baby Doctor or are we Dr. Baby? See, that's the thing I don't know. That's I'm the real question. I'm confused now. Have, okay. He just are we in the Twilight I Zone? It's been Dr. Baby. <laughs> I, I, you know what I don't. Oh, really chat, know. tell us who knows. <laughs> Dr. Baby. Uh, yeah, but I think that uh, even episodes that I haven't fully enjoyed, uh, I think that the the cast, like you know. Uh, Greg Kinnear was great in that episode, not one of my favorites, but uh, I think in general they've done a really good job uh, casting this show. And yes, uh, I thought that Seth Rogen was going to be on the show, and then I kind of forgot, and now we saw that next week he will be. So uh, I think... uh, Speaking (laughs) of people that are usually comedians, right? That's true. So uh, we'll we'll see what he does with it. Uh, but uh, doesn't look very funny. I'm gonna put that out there just from that teaser. Kind of looks hysterical. <laughs> we have the chat Go saying ahead. Doctor Baby, Baby Doctor. Chat is torn. torn. Yeah, we've only got one more episode. We're gonna have to settle this by next week. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, we'll have an announcement about next week uh, at the end of the episode, so stay tuned. Uh, let's uh, go through the episode a little bit, uh, just because of the way that the Blue Scorpion kind of presents itself. Uh, you know, one of the first things we see is the bullet that uh, Chris Adad's character is Jeff, because everyone he meets is Jeff. But this is Jeff Stork, so that's the Jeff we're talking about mostly. And we see that the, the bullet that his father used actually had his name Otis on it, but then we also see that the name disappear at that point. So uh, I think that that was where I was just like, all right, so this gun is going to make him kill himself, and it's going to be 41 minutes of uh, him you know, fighting the urge to kill himself. Um, but, uh, I, I, again, that's one of the other ways where I think it, it, it did a lot different than what we were expecting. But um, what did you sort of think of in, in the moment as you're watching it, Raven, you know, just when the uh, when his father, we find out he killed himself and we see this uh, weird gun, uh, did the wheels start turning and you try to figure out what had happened? No, I actually took the ride. This, Good for you. I, it was no moment of um, even thinking he's going to commit suicide himself or not. The gun itself and whatever human mind <laughs> it had didn't allow me to do that. I just felt like I didn't know what was going to happen. And when it went off on its own, you guys know I, that was too much for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, that scared me. Like yeah. I paused the television. Because because you had to calm down. I because had to you calm were down. Yes. Uh, Angelica, <laughs> we've often talked uh, week in week out about how you watch the show and you start writing the rest of the episode in your head. Uh, where did yours go? Was it uh, very different than what uh, that happened in the actual episode? I uh, I mean at first, you know, I, I kind of saw that okay, the gun it had the dad's name on it and then it disappeared. Okay, it's a magic gun, right? We figured that part out, but then I wasn't sure what was going to happen after that until obviously Jeff found the gun again and then it had his name on the bullet. And I think the the strange thing here is when you see maybe if the name was written on the gun, you'd be like, oh, okay, you're the gun owner. But when it's written on a bullet, you think, oh, that's where that bullet goes. So it definitely felt like a death sentence. For someone. Mm-hmm. There were too many Jeffs. It was a little too m- metaphorical with a bullet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think that we kind of see this change in his whole outlook when he starts running into all the Jeffs. Because I think he has the thought, like, uh, this gun's going to kill me. Yeah. And then he's like, oh no, there are so many Jeffs. I could probably kill all of them with just my one magic bullet. I think everything's going to be all right. Um, Maybe not so many Otises, though. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, mm-hmm. you know, if that, if that had had the name Otis on it for a long time and it was just waiting for an Otis... Well, it would make sense that uh, the gun had been around since 1959, Cuba. Although, so true. Yeah, although it would make more sense to find a dog named Otis 
than that freaking dog on the college campus named Jeff. Who names That's their true. dog Jeff? <laughs> That's what true. kind of dog was that? Is it like a, a Jack Russell? I mean, like people give people give uh, people Jack names Russell to dogs like Dave. You know who names their dog Dave? My dog my is friend. Cooper and Tommy. That's my, adorable though. But my, like my Jeff, friend, my friend Will's dog's name is Dave. That's why I use what? this as an example. Yeah, oh he's, my gosh, he's Dave the dog. Okay, is it David or <laughs> no, they shorten it? No, it's just no, Dave. They're friends. <laughs> At least that's an alliteration, David? not like Dave. not yeah. Jeffrey the. You know, oh, husky Giraffe. or something. Yeah, yeah like, come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I uh, There are, like, weird, like, quirky sort of, like, funny moments uh, early on, like when Jeff, obviously, Jeff Stork is talking to the police officer. He's like, he wants him, and he's like, my father basically shot himself in front of me, and then there's this whole back and forth. He's like, no, nah, it would have been last night. He's like I said, basically. That was great. And, yeah. and, it, and you're just like, there's little things like that that don't really lead anywhere, but it's like fun little detours that you can tell that they're taking just for the sake of like, why you know why is everybody mm-hmm. such a pain in the ass? I'm <laughs> in, gonna say this, that just to say I didn't yeah. say absolute. I said basically. Right. That yeah. Was great. It was it Banter. was a good character establishing mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, that that definitely told us a lot about him. Uh, when we see the note, Angelica, I love him more than you. Who did you think that was about? Because I thought it was about me, but uh, I thought that would have been really <laughs> Of weird. course you did. Yeah. And Baby Doctor, right? Well, baby Doctor loves me more than Dr. Baby. <laughs> loves me? Is that what you're saying? Yes, wow. more than Dr. Baby. Yeah. That really hit hard. Um, so <laughs> when I first read that note, I was thinking maybe, okay, so I was trying to go the very practical route here and just think, okay, maybe he killed himself and you know, he loved somebody. Like, I was trying to be very practical, yeah. just sort of step by step throughout this um, episode. But then we started seeing more of that, obviously, come up later, the I love him more than I ever loved you. And obviously, I don't think that was aimed at the sun ever, but but man, was that probably a really uh, painful to hear. Yeah. You're like, I hope that's not for me, at least if you were Jeff. Right. Um, but yeah, so... We saw that come up again, you know, with the the Cuban guy who could could be an illusion, and then we have him shouted again later in the episode. Yeah. So it started to kind of take on its own meaning. Well, my first thought when I saw it was, oh my god, does he have a brother? And then the note is like, I love him more than you. I'm like, what a what a terrible thing to but write. But that wouldn't be a good death note, you know. Yeah, but if you're a jerk. Hey, you know? If you are a jerk, but Otis was a hippie. He sounded great. I wanted to be his friend. Right? I mean, I would have liked to... <laughs> great music. I, I would have liked to have seen him at Monterey <laughs> Pop, Pop Festival. I mean, he played with Neil Young and Crazy Horse. I mean, he got this yeah. this pretty great uh, resume for him. And, uh, you know, where was the... Where was like the 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 film like projected on the wall of him playing? I would like to have seen that. Uh, what did you? Th- let me just ask you the same question, Raven. What did you think of the uh, "I love him more than you" note? Okay, I don't know if you were joking, but I actually kind of was on the same page with you. Like, is there another person? No, that's what I, I, I thought. Oh, okay. that there must have been another family member. I legitimately thought that it's like, oh, we're about to meet somebody else. As did I. And that's the one that it's to. But then, of course, he asked the good question. Is like, am I the him or am I the you? You know what I mean? Like, he didn't know. It was like, was this to somebody else about me or was this to me about somebody else? That's what I was wondering, too. I was like, yeah. wow, that that must be so painful to hear as a child and then I was just thinking maybe the father had a lover or something but um, yeah and it was a tragedy but yeah uh who here on the panel noticed the serial number of the gun 1015-59 so uh more 1059 uh, sorry 1015 and uh most of the episodes have had it in there somewhere but I apparently haven't always noticed it and uh people in our chat will always uh, do a good job of telling us thank you chat yes, yes. thank you chat we have a very lively chat this evening and we'll we'll include you in the conversation in a little bit um angelica how glad are you that you're not the roommate of Jeff's student who was uh, talking about her paper and how she can't leave her things home alone. She so seems happy. Like she'd be, <laughs> I was just like, oh, this is one of the most annoying people I've ever met on, in television. And I've met a lot of annoying people through the magic of television. I mean, yeah, that was a, that was a s- funny yet kind of strange scene. It was um, giving me some traumatic flashbacks to college. 
And, you know, when you're writing a paper and it's sort of haunting you, but hers is haunting her, I think, a little bit more. Uh, she was talking about how, what was it? Um, so the, Jeff, the, the professor, he was a professor of anthropology, and the student was studying, or she was writing a paper on Chinese an a animism. animism. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, animism is basically when objects... I have it written down here. Actually, it's a religious belief that everything, even objects, have a soul. So this student was starting to give souls to all of the right. objects. So she wouldn't even want her shoes didn't in want the dark in her closet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She didn't want them to be alone. And um, honestly, it was a moment where I was like, oh, wow, like she seems so, you know, neurotic and, and just so like wound up. And then it reminded me of college. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I kind of relate when those papers start to haunt you and you're thinking about it too much. Uh, Raven, before you left the house to uh, come here, did you make sure that all of your shoes were grouped together so that there wasn't like a pair of shoes that would buy itself? But they're so lonely. Why would you do that? I did have thoughts like that as a child. With stuffed but animals? With, okay, guys, don't make fun of me out here. Like with food and things. I thought it didn't to want to be eaten. Oh, like things like well, that. Well, how'd you? I eat? mean, did you end up? Did you? <laughs> did you end up being vegan because you did? For think, a while. Yeah, just because yeah. things didn't want to be eaten. I used to eat a lot of pancakes. You know, those I, pancakes a, didn't want to be eaten either. As a kid, I didn't realize milk and all of that was involved. If you if you if you meat. go to Denny's, you'll see a giant pancake with a face, and he's wearing a hat and he has shoes. <laughs> Do you think that guy wants to be eaten? Um, before. We move on. I think uh, Raven has a very important non-pancake related message for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Uh, Garrett, Star, Don, thank you. Just call thank them all. Jeff. Just call everybody Jeff. Jeffs. Thank all you all the Jeffs we've got, for watching. We've got like 20 Jeffs in the chat <laughs> yes. right now. Yes. Thank you for making us the ESPN of TV talk. We appreciate you guys. So if you're on YouTube right now, you know what we need the thumbs up if you're listening to us on itunes five stars wherever you're listening keep enjoying we love uh being here with you guys we love you in the chat it's a lot of you in here today we appreciate it keep on talking keep on leaving the comments and let everybody know that there's so many shows to watch here on after buzz you can see us on a few of them and uh we enjoy having you guys keep it going uh, after your revelation just a mere moments ago, Raven, uh, C.R. Torres in the chat says, Wow, Raven, LOL. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted you to know. Those are beautiful this words. Is a, this is a safe space here yes. in the chat. Very, this will come back to haunt me, I'm sure. <laughs> a clip of this. The pancakes somewhere. will come back yes. to haunt you yeah. because you ate so many of them. And they're poor pancake souls. I was a yeah. child. It'll be like a Gulliver's <laughs> Travels where like a whole army of pancakes like pull you down with strings and then uh, devour you whole. But we'll say we'll say we saw it coming though. Right. We'll get we'll say uh, Angelica and I will say lovely things at uh, at your pancake funeral. Um, so uh, we do start to notice. You know, uh, so there's when Jeff is on the campus, he hears all the Jeff, 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 and then. It starts to be everyone that he meets. At first, it's just like, oh, I'm hearing a lot of Jeffs. So the lawyer's name is Jeff. The uh, guy at the, the gun wholesaler uh, on the phone, uh, which, by the way, look, he's just not that into you, okay? Just stop calling. But uh, so every, everybody's named Jeff. So I, I found that to be interesting, but I, uh, I didn't quite see, I didn't quite know what that was going to mean. Like, I was just like, is it just letting him know it's okay to kill anybody. What did you think when he met so many Jeffs as the episode went along, Angelica? I I wasn't so attached to the name. More so I thought maybe it was a tool in the show to, I guess, like, maybe he has to solve a puzzle for which Jeff is the right Jeff. So I kind of had a little bit of a different approach to this. Not necessarily a Jeff, but which one is the Jeff? Right, the one who uh, deserves uh, the bullet. Now, how come none of them were G-E-O-F-F? -F? I think that's a pretty common spelling of Jeff. I, thought that, I always thought that was G-O-F. It's, it's usually Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> usually. Well, I'm uh, you glad can, you I can never think that it's said that out loud. <laughs> yeah, good like thing right you didn't now. say it on a, on a show that uh, <laughs> lots of people are watching. Uh, well, anyway. Hi, G-O-F. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to anyone out there named G-O-F. It's like short for 
Geoffrey? G- Geoffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, or the way that people actually say it, Jeffrey. <laughs> okay, I tried well. to help my panelists here. Yeah. You learn something new. <laughs> yeah, we're learning a lot. We're learning about, about Geoff. We're learning about Do- pancakes. Dave, dogs named Dave. Dogs named Dave. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Um, what did you think, Raven, about the, the little bit of backstory we got about the Blue Scorpion? That uh, you, just from referencing the ten fifteen fifty nine serial number, that he's only the seventh person to own it, but uh, it's been around since 1959 Cuba. Che Guevara was looking for it. And uh, we do get to meet, I, be, I, I really think his name is Julio and Fuegos, but I might be wrong about that name. I'm not going to say for sure. But uh, that's the possible projection that we saw. Uh, as they kind of explain this backstory, what are you thinking about the gun, Raven? I'm thinking they did a really good job of making the gun seem cool. Like, I want the, the, the scorpion, on, scorpion on it itself, the color, the backstory, the, just the romanticizing of it. You know, I probably would have been the person that's like, yeah, I gotta have that gun, even though I don't have guns at all. No, <laughs> I've, I, I've never wanted a gun before, but then I saw that one. I'm like, you know, that would be a really cool gun to have. Yes. Like, if you're gonna have a gun, like, I don't want it to maybe you know, not have it be loaded. I don't want a bullet with my name on it for sure. Right. Which, you know, because then if you have a bullet that says Christian on it, then it's like, okay, so is this some kind of like religious hate crime that right. I'm trying to perpetrate <laughs> here? Uh, it's it's too vague. I, I I don't want that. But the gun looks really cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, let us know in the chat if uh, if well let us know in the chat if you have a blue scorpion gun because apparently you can get all the way up to well it got up to a hundred thousand. Uh, but then I think that he offered even more. But then our Jeff was just yelling so much at the guy because he was so annoyed that I'm not quite sure what the value went up to. But. It is, it is really interesting just that the people are fat. Like when he goes to the gun range, when Jeff goes to the gun range. Uh, oh, and by the way, when he goes to the gun range, there's very clearly a Twilight Zone episode on the TV there, but I couldn't figure out which one it was. So if it's a little homework assignment from people in the chat. Did you recognize the episode? I'm just assuming because it was in black and white it had to be Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the guy at the gun range is like, well, why don't you just sell it instead of firing it? And, you know, I feel like those are probably the people you don't want to let into your gun range. I was like, no, 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 I just, I just have to fire this thing once, and then I want to sell it. Um, I don't know. It's very hypothetical, Angelica, but if you worked at that gun range, would you have let Jeff uh, take a loaded firearm onto the range and, and shot near other humans? Well, I thought that was an interesting scene. It was a little bit of almost like comic or what is it, comedic relief mm-hmm. right there because it was very genuine and almost authentic <laughs> the way they spoke to him. Like, what do you mean? They didn't just follow along with the whole, you know, show plot thing where sometimes we, people do things in order to further the plot, but instead mm-hmm. these people were here to almost like stop him. <laughs> and I thought it was it was pretty interesting because it was almost like, okay, so we're seeing sort of Jeff go into a very neurotic direction now, almost like his student that he saw um, previously, uh, talking about the animism and giving this gun life. And I thought that was, you know, it was a a pretty interesting scene. I don't know if I would let him into my gun range, but um, it was also funny to see how many improper ways he could shoot a, pit, oh. a handgun. That was um, yeah, he was doing the one hand. He was doing behind the back. <laughs> yeah, it was one thing when he was doing it around the house and doing the little uh, Dirty Harry speech. You yeah. Know, you know, how many uh, bullets did he have? You know, do you feel lucky? The whole thing. Uh, but then he was actually at the gun range. I'm just like, this guy's not taking gun ownership very you, seriously. Right. You cannot be shooting that thing behind <clears throat> your back, okay? I don't know if he's ever shot a gun before, but that thing should probably have some kick to it. You cannot just be swinging that baby around. Have you guys gone to a gun range before? I have. I have (laughs) shot guns uh, outside, uh, but uh, never uh, at the range, though. Because it does feel like they let anyone in. When I went, I was concerned about going in because of how easy it was to go in. Right. I uh, I, I was going to go with friends (laughs) once, but then uh, I had to go through some safety seminar beforehand, and we didn't want to sit through Uh. that. Uh, so we just shot them out in the woods. Lame. Yeah, right. <laughs> Safety? Safety. Come, Come on. on. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, what do you think, Raven, about uh, just 
the insistence like oh, everybody seems to know that this gun doesn't like the dark and so uh, what I like is when Jeff puts it in his desk drawer he's got the little flashlight on there because he's like I don't want the gun out on the desk but I also don't want him to get scared uh, what did you th- what did you think as, the, as that kept coming up well I wondered when it the gun, because now it feels like a human. When the gun was with the police, how did it stay? How did it not react? Or because it was in I, the dark? I think it was very upset when it was in that FedEx <laughs> box. It was exactly angry. Yeah, it was a mad gun. I didn't get the. I felt like that had some sort of meaning that maybe one of you could explain to me. What was the deeper mm. meaning of this? It was just to anthrop. Promorphize. I always feel like I'm going to say that wrong. Uh, it was just to humanize yeah, the gun okay. or personify. It's just to give it, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a kid. It's, mm-hmm. even it's, though it was from 1959, it's scared of the dark. It's mm-hmm. giving it, you know, strengths and weaknesses here. Got it. Um, it's okay. giving it a temper, so to speak, and fears yeah. and love and things like that. We're Sweet. giving it uh, human emotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now, Angelica, okay. speaking of uh, tempers, uh, what did you think about when Jeff is at the kind of negotiation? with the lawyer and his soon-to-be ex-wife. And not so much when he freaks out, but he's just like, I, I've got something that's going to make all my troubles disappear. Because in that moment, I'm like, oh, so he brought the gun so that he can shoot lawyer Jeff or so he can shoot boyfriend Jeff, uh, as in his wife's boyfriend Jeff, mm-hmm. uh, or both. Um, w- did you have a, a specific feeling for what was going to happen in that scene? And, and well, is it what happened? or? De- uh, definitely not. I mean, they they built it up a certain way, and I think they did that a lot in this episode, mm-hmm. where you thought one thing was going to happen, and then they threw you off, and, and, you know, they did a good job with that with all the Jeffs. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't, like, the, the one Jeff that he meets or something. Um, I definitely thought, okay, so he's got the gun in his bag. He's clutching it, and this is the ultimate kind of a, the the final form or the what it, oh, I don't know how to say it, but, like, this is the final stage of his neuroticism. This is how far and how low he can get with this gun, the blue scorpion. And um, I thought it was definitely a interesting uh, scene for it. And I was almost a little mad with him. How dare you take away dad's bass guitar? You know, so for me, I was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, it's making sense with the whole episode and kind of where he's been leading. And then also, I'm kind of mad, too. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, obviously, in an actual uh, divorce proceeding, you would be like, yeah, that thing's actually worth a lot. So uh, you can't just keep it for yourself. we got to sell it and split the money, which a lot of times is what happens with uh, any kind of property, like uh, mm-hmm. houses and stuff. But uh, divorce lawyer Jeff was uh, one of my least favorite Jeffs in the episode. Uh, dog Jeff is probably the greatest one. Dog but, Jeff was cool. I yeah. don't remember what kind of dog it was, though. And I, you know, that's it kind was of a Jeff dog. Ir- irking me right now. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a Jeff dog. <laughs> uh, so when we later see our Jeff, not Dog Jeff, uh, he's in the car. It looks like he's outside. At first, I was like, "Is that his house? Is that boyfriend Jeff's house? Or are they both in the same place?" I wasn't quite sure where they were, but he's definitely there. He's definitely got a gun with a bullet that says Jeff on it. So I feel like he's really focused on, like, I don't know, Raven, did you feel like he went there to shoot boyfriend Jeff, wherever, whichever house that was in? I felt like that could happen. I don't know if people, when they're in desperate situations like that, things are fully thought through. I don't know if he fully went there, like knowing this is what he would do, but he right. knew he was in a de- he was desperate at this moment. And, right? Was it more of like a, I'm going to bring my gun in case Jeff needs some killing? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Well, case, look, that's how you rational. That's how you can rationalize things. To you, it was like, look, I don't want to kill him, but what if he needs it? Well, at you know? that point, he had that gun on him all right. the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, that's yes. true. I wouldn't go anywhere without my blue scorpion. Uh, Angelica, when the uh, skirmish happens and the, uh, you know, we had the little exposition earlier that there have been a lot of home invasions in the neighborhood, which are not car invasions, but we'll move past that for a moment. And the gun goes off without him firing it. Uh, someone in the uh, chat, I think it was Star Drew, wanted to know if we were, we were startled when that happened. What did you think during that entire skirmish, including when the gun went off? 
I was just genuinely confused at why this the burglar was even trying to um, assail yeah. <laughs> Jeff in the first place. It just looked like a sort of fun brotherly fight, like wrestling <laughs> almost. Um, he, he didn't seem to have any weapon. He wasn't going for the gun. He didn't even see the, I don't, I guess he didn't see the gun as valuable or what sort of was going on, but it definitely was, um, you know, confusing. And then we see the gun's barrel pointing yeah. out, and we're just like, okay, like, at least for me, I just kind of knew something's going to happen. This gun has already gone off on its own, and it's got a bit of a mind of its own. So we'll see. We'll see. I chalk that up to just Jeff's being Jeff, you know. Oh, uh, Jeff's. Jeff's wrestling. Jeff's yeah. uh, being dogs. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. It's wild stuff. Yeah. So I, uh, I, you know, I thought it was. I don't know. I, I felt like when we kept seeing the gun, I'm like, all right, so it's gonna, it's gonna shoot somebody. Right. I'm gonna assume that this, uh, you know, this home invasion guy who is now a car invasion guy, I'm gonna assume his name's Jeff. But I thought it might actually shoot boyfriend Jeff. Like I thought that it was gonna kind of be an excuse for that to go off. What I didn't expect to happen was for him to become a uh, local hero, Jeff, yeah. for saving the neighborhood. That was the, That's why I was like, what? That yeah. was the twist there. That, uh, we had that moment where it was like a triangle of beautiful just jeff palooza out there, and then all of a sudden, good things happened. Yeah, what did you think, Raven, with that reveal? That uh... It's weird to say <laughs> this was unrealistic because all of Twilight Zone, <laughs> it's the Twilight Zone. But... One, what you guys are saying, home invasion becomes car invasion guy. I actually, for a split second, didn't know because I didn't see his whole get up. Yeah. If Jeff came out of the house. Like, I did think that doing? for a second, actually, yeah. Right. So that was my first moment. And I was like, oh, this is a carjacking. What is happening here? It's a whole new Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the ending felt the same as... Uh, the, the episode with the men where she was like, no, I won't smile. You yeah. Know? It, it gave me the same just kind of corny vibe. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, before accept. we talk about the very ending of it, so then, so he, Angelica, he's a local hero, and then the ex-wife decides to uh, just give him pretty much everything that he wants in the divorce, and then becomes the chair of the Department of a uh, Anthropology. And uh, it seems like the blue scorpion has done him right. Are you surprised that he then takes the blue scorpion and throws it into the lake? I was fairly surprised. Yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, after all of that sort of, you know, humanizing this gun, uh, possessing it almost neurotically so close to him, and having the gun then sort of treat him well and work out well for him, I, I was actually surprised that he still wanted to get rid of this gun. I, I figured the gun having a positive effect on his life would make him want to possess it more. Yeah, I mean, it definitely made me want it. I was like, dude, you didn't even ask. You just threw it in the lake. Like, I definitely would have taken the blue score. But, you know, that or guy was sold saying, it? Yeah, we, the offers were just pouring in. That but, was very, very pricey. Um, did you, Raven, expect that gun to uh, find its way back to Jeff? Uh, you know, there were still a couple of minutes left in the episode uh, d because, uh, you know, he throws it. And uh, I don't know the way, you know, if you think of like the old like monkey's paw story, stuff like that, things will always find oh, its way back to way. you. It'll just like, you know, he'd wake. So then you could cut to a scene the next morning. He wakes up and then the blue scorpion's like there in the nightstand. That's you know? exactly what I thought. Right. It was going to come back in the mail some strange way or we would see. Yeah, that's what to I thought. To be fair, he's gotten it back in the mail like yeah. twice <laughs> now, I think. Exactly. Yeah. But then this yeah. is the time where uh, the blue scorpion's like, all right, I can take a hint. You know, uh, unlike the guy who runs the gun store, I realized that apparently this isn't working out. Um, so really, for Jeff, he essentially has a happy ending, which none of our main characters in the Twilight Zone have had up until this point. Uh, some have had much less happier endings than others, including being bludgeoned by rocks, performed on by Dr. Baby. Uh, you know, I mean, we can... We Sexually go. harassed by military personnel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, that 
which, you know, if my choices are that or getting beaten to death with a rock, I'm probably going to take that. But uh, <laughs> that's just me. I'm old fashioned like that. Uh, so I, I don't know. I was just really surprised that and we'll talk about the actual ending scene in a second. But uh, Angelica, did you did you think that there was going to be more for Jeff than when we see him throw the gun into the water? I just thought, I mean, I, I kind of felt a bit of a... They did a good job, I think, for me with the structure of this this whole episode. I felt it, you know, they, they, they set it up, they built up that neuroticism, and then they did a twist, and it was sort of like a happy montage and a conclusion yeah. where he threw it into the lake. Mm-hmm. I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen after that. I was just like, wow, okay, happy ending. This is great. I figured maybe someone else was going to have the gun now since he essentially, you know, killed a Jeff. Um, He got the name wiped from that bullet. So I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen, but it did pain me a little bit to see the gun just thrown away like that. It's a really sweet gun. Yeah, it's a great gun. It came in, like, this cute little box, Mm -hmm. you know? It was heart-shaped. It was a heart-shaped box. They did the whole job of making us Is this a Nirvana reference? Yes, it is indeed a (laughs) heart-shaped box, yeah. Uh, which, you know, I mean, look, we, we're well past uh, Valentine's Day, but uh, fellas and ladies out there in the audience, keep that in mind for next Valentine's Day. A heart-shaped box with a gun inside of it. A is, gold uh, one. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, it's gold? What? Well, the, the, the like, handle has yeah. some gold. Oh, the box. I, I thought we were talking about the gun. Um, I was like, that was not like a golden no, the gun, eagle. The gun was. The gun had some gold right. on it. It did? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's not, it wasn't an entirely. I uh, saw a lot of silver, blue, and ivory. The blue, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, definitely the blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we get to the scene at the end, which is where I thought we were going to get our public service announcement, and to some extent we did. Uh, kid finds a gun, kid points a gun at the other kid. But then they're just roughhousing and playing around. So uh, what do you think that the big takeaway was from the scene with the kids with the gun, Angelica? I was, I had a moment where I was a little confused by it. I was like, is this a commentary on, you know, gun control? Because I guess that's sort of how I've been set up by this series yeah, so yeah, far. Absolutely. Is there a social commentary here? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it leaned mostly away from that. And it was talking more about... I guess the big takeaway for me was like minimalism. Don't let objects control you. Right. But with the kids, it did feel like it took on its own meaning in terms of, you know, maybe gun control. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that uh, we, we did get a little bit of that in, in that scene for sure. So that but, threw me for a loop a little bit. Right. What did you think, Raven, with that uh, last scene with the kids? Okay. And correction. When I said I didn't like the ending, I meant the ending for Jeff. The Jeff ending. The Jeff ending I did not like. I, I, How do we know that those two kids aren't also named Jeff? Because one's one Kyle. Was Kyle on yeah, me. okay. What about the other one? <laughs> Come on now. The other one's Dr. Baby. <laughs> grown up. Oh my God, he's grown up. <laughs> that ending. Okay, God, why am I so scary, guys? I, seeing the kids with the gun that bothered me, so well, I I was like, pl- I can't I, even. Watch I thought this that we right were now. gonna. I didn't think we were gonna see a kid shoot another kid, but I did think we were gonna cut away and we were gonna hear, hear a sound. gunshot or something. Yeah. yeah. And when we didn't get that, first of all, I was relieved because yes. I don't I don't like seeing things like that. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I'm a, I guess they're just saying. Well, so here's the thing: from the end narration, uh, Jordan Peele says, "Tragedy will forever be manufactured here in the Twilight Zone." And my reaction to that was, did you just watch the episode? Because he really, like, Jeff's life was tragic before he got the gun. He didn't have any money. And then now he's a hero. He's the chair of the department. His wife had a very amicable divorce. Uh, And no, he didn't sell the gun and get the money. He's got to keep his dad's base. So, you know, maybe he'll learn how to play it and go on tour with Neil Young as well. Uh, So I didn't feel like it was tragic for Jeff. And usually we're supposed to feel, you know, I mean, like last week, uh, Jennifer Goodwin's character. You're like, oh, yeah, man, that sure was tragic, her coming over from her uh, her black and white dimension or reality, whatever. Uh, but I was just like, Jeff is like the winner of the Twilight Zone through the first nine episodes. Nobody's done better in the Twilight Zone by the end of the episode. Because, you know, right. in the comedian, he was doing pretty well up until a point. But uh, so... But it did show how just the possession of the gun made him almost want 
to kill or have the urge to kill or part the gun had its own humanistic ways but part now he's stalking outside with the gun now he's taking the gun to meet with when he meets with the wife and the lawyer why are you what what is happening to you right now so it did seem like the there was something there about just having the possession of the gun now he's talking and this and shooting all cool or you know cool whatever that is so i do think there was something there that they were trying to show us in in that way uh, Garrett North in the chat has a great comment. Uh, it's like the episode Nick of Time from the original Twilight Zone, which is the other episode with William Shatner in it where they're in the diner. It's a happy ending for the main couple, but because they have a happy ending, this new couple comes in at the end, and then they're the ones who are kind of screwed. So these kids end up with a gun, and you can kind of fill in, the, so, you know, somebody yeah. somebody's going to get shot who shouldn't because, you know, we have established that... Uh, kids shouldn't be doctors. They also should not be marksmen. You know, I, I think that they're, they're probably not ready to uh, to do that. Uh, and Rami in the chat said that last scene with the two boys just gave me so much anxiety. Uh, yes. What what were your what was your big takeaway, Angelica, from that ending, the scene with the boys there? I my big takeaway was just trying to figure out. I guess with this one. I felt like, okay, throughout the journey of the episode and what I was experiencing, it felt a lot more like ori the original series of The Twilight Zone. However, towards the end, I felt like the overall statement, kind of how you mentioned, uh, as long as objects are valued more than lives, tragedy will forever be manufactured. And it was like, well, we didn't really see that too much in this episode. Um, so it, it was a little difficult. It was like, okay, is this gun control? Is this just advocating not coveting objects? Um, it was a little interesting, and I think that part got a little muddied for me. The kids playing around with a gun, yeah, that was kind of uh, anxiety driving. Yeah. However, I... Um, they they seemed like not too bad with it. I hope I'm just hoping one of them went home and their parent was like, "What is that?" And what are you doing away. with the blue score? Exactly. I'm gonna go sell it to that guy, the gun dealer. Uh, right. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jeff. Mr. Jeff. Mr. Jeff. Uh, Stratagon in the chat uh, points out that this episode. You know, we were talking about how this episode didn't uh, you know deal with issues a lot like the other ones. Uh, here he lists the he or she I shouldn't assume what a terrible way for me to look at the world in 2019 mm -hmm. Stratagon uh, so all these things are addressed in this episode suicide accidental firings accidentally shooting innocents stand your ground romanticized weapons children acquiring weapons valuing objects more than human life so yes those are all lessons but it didn't feel like we were preached to about it like we have been in, in many of the previous episodes. That phrase that we have used and overused so often in the last episodes, which was on the nose, on right? The nose. Yes. On the nose. <laughs> and it's also been heavy handed. Heavy handed. Yes. Yeah. It's also been heavy nosed, which I heavy don't quite nosed. Know what that means, yeah, so. we got really intense with that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one's really catching on. Yeah. I think it's, it's trending on Twitter. Uh, anyway, uh, let us know in the chat if you're watching the archive version of uh, this, uh, what you thought of the episode, and uh, we'll try to include your comments into next week's show. And speaking of next week's show, a couple things to remember. It is indeed the season finale. And we talked about a few weeks ago that uh, Twilight Zone has been renewed for season two. Yay. And I believe I mentioned this last week, that on the same day that the season finale goes up, there will also be the option to watch all of the episodes in black and white. Uh, I'm probably going to pick one of the episodes I liked the most. Uh, I actually think that uh, Nightmare at 30,000 Feet is the one that would probably look the coolest in black and white, but uh, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to check one of them out just to see what the difference is. But also, when we do our season finale next Thursday, it will be at... Three Pacific, six Eastern, uh, for uh, we can pretend it's for special reason, but I I have to get on flight ten fifteen to Ooh. New Orleans, so I figure everything's going to be fine, right? Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to listening to a new podcast when I'm on that flight. Seems so, safe. Yeah, right. There's nothing going to be wrong <laughs> in there. Uh, so that'll be next Thursday. 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, and of course, if you watch the archive version, it'll just show up at the same time, like you always get it. But until then. Raven, where do people find you? 
guys, you can find me here Mondays, Gentleman Jack, if you're not watching it on HBO. But if you want to see more of my life, I guess, I'm on Instagram, Raven with an I, R-A-I-V-E-N, French, Raven French. Angelica. And I'm Angelica Trey. You can find me on most platforms at A Trey, A Y Y T R A E, or on Twitch as well. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian DMZ. And Tuesday nights doing the Chernobyl after show uh, for it's the HBO show. That'll be here Tuesdays at 9 and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, th that's the one that I wanted to promote. Anyway, thanks so much to everybody in the chat. We had a great conversation as always. Yes. And we have one more episode next Thursday. As I said, 3 Eastern, 6 Pacific. We will see everybody then in the Twilight Bye. Time. Bye. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 